Every week we have him here louder with Crowder because he's a lovely boy. Steve, how are you? I am doing well, sir. Thanks for having me. Always glad to be here. Thank you. Well, let me give some background on this. A confidential uh, Justice Department memo concludes that the U.S. government can order the killing of American citizens if they are believed to be, quote, senior operational leaders of al-Qaeda or an associated force, even if there is no intelligence indicating they are engaged in an active plot to attack the U.S. It's a large memo. And what has to be said here is that um, before the election, uh, Romney and his people were accused of supporting this approach. Uh, there's a quite funny video, actually, where uh, people are, are told, what do you think about this policy? And they say, typical Romney, and, of course, it's an Obama policy. Steve, I, I, look, I, 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 the Amer Americans and America has a right to defend them and itself. That is fine. If you happen to have an American passport, we've just heard that someone with a Canadian passport was one of the people responsible for murdering Israelis in, in Bulgaria. It doesn't always mean you're really American or Canadian. But even if they're not actually linked to direct terror attacks, the Americans can still kill their own citizens? Yeah, well, here, here's the thing. You just touched on so, so many issues, and, and you're right on all of them. But here's what's really important. Uh, like you said, this is very interchangeable with what people said they hated about Bush. Uh, this is the Patriot Act on steroids with the ability to kill, essentially. Yeah. Uh, Barack Obama, what bothers me is not him being tough on terrorism, okay? If he were to come out and talk about this, that's fine. What bothers me is he runs on the platform of ending the war on terrorism and being the peaceful president. And then, once he got his first Homeland Security briefing, said, okay, Michelle, get my brown pants, and all of a sudden, his foreign <laughs> policy changed. And you see that here right now. And by the way, this is a little bit inappropriate, just due to the timeline. If it were to be, okay, you're a member of al-Qaeda, you're involved in a plot, we have the right to kill you, I am perfectly fine with that. I am as pro-blowing up terrorists as you can possibly be. But when you actually look at this memo, and you look at essentially what's being proposed, it's, it's very vague. You don't have to be involved with a specific activity. You don't necessarily have to be involved with just al-Qaeda. It can be an affiliated group, essentially any kind of a terrorist group. And what they say is, uh, this can occur. They can kill you unless you renege. So you have to renege on an operation that you may or may not be involved with uh, to a person who won't even give out a name. So you couldn't possibly know how. Now, when you look at the timeline and you look at this bill, it is a little bit unnerving when for a significant time in this presidency, uh, this administration, administration, people like Pelosi or even people like uh, Napolitano said that Tea Partiers, that veterans, that pro-lifers should be flagged to the White House as potential terrorist threats. This actually Steve, happened. But hold on, Steve, on Steve, Steve, that, that, that was someone being an idiot. It was a stupid comment. Is that really pertinent to this? I mean, do we, do we really think the time will come when Obama and his people will say, you're a Tea Partier, you're a Catholic, you're a pro-lifer, thus, even if, if a citizen, we can kill you with a drone? Come on. Well, I'm not saying, no, no, here's the point. I'm not saying they're saying we're going to kill you with a drone for being pro-life. I am saying that an administration who has said that fellow Americans who have a different point of view should be flagged. It wasn't a stupid comment. There was a program designed to flag people to the White House as potential terrorists, uh, which were then investigated. This, this was a violation of privacy. That occurred. Then you're talking about a president, I, I know your English is a little bit different here. We're pretty touchy about our Second Amendment, who wanted to essentially- I'm Canadian, give actually, choice, Steve. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Canadians, sorry. Canadians still don't have, are, are a little bit different about the, than the United States and their Second Amendment. Uh, systematically would disarm the American populace if given the choice. That's the platform of the Democratic Party. Then you look at the same administration who has tried to accuse any single news outlet here in the States that has even been slightly critical of him of not really being a news outlet. And then you look at this memo. When you take text, no, I'm not saying they're going to go out and kill all pro-lifers. But you do have to acknowledge that, by definition, we're looking at somewhat of a soft tyranny right, right. now. And that's what makes Americans uneasy. If this well, were more specific, let me interrupt you for a moment because, framed in... Steve, hold on a moment, because see, the Skype just froze for a moment. And I'm pretty sure that was Barack Obama personally intervening. Hey, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not doubting you. <laughs> I, I understand some of the reaction to uh, Obama. And he is... He says one thing and he governs in another way. What I find most, not troubling, but just irritating, is that what he's saying now, everything in this memo, if it came out of a Republican administration, you would say, OK, this is pretty hardcore, but I understand this. But this is just the sort of thing that Obama and his people, his supporters, both in politics and media, were saying, we've got to stop this happening. If you, uh, if you vote Republican, this is what will happen. It has happened right. very quickly under a Democratic administration with a so-called liberal president. The man is an aching hypocrite. No, no, you're absolutely right. And I would ask liberals a very genuine question. 
What is worse, several people having been waterboarded or essentially giving certain very specific individuals in this administration the unfettered power and authority to eliminate American citizens? Which is worse, coming from a liberal perspective, again, I'm a conservative, I'm even one of the people when it came to the TSA, I said, listen, if it were actually effective, if I believe the TSA could do their job, they can stare at my junk all day long because safety comes before me having a more convenient airport experience. Well, I think I, I, there are many people who like to do that, I'm sure, Steve, even if it's not connected to terrorism. Let me just ask you uh, this other issue. We weren't going to speak about it. We are discussing it tomorrow. But I want to ask you, because they've just found the, the, the bombing in Bulgaria, and these were... This was not an Israeli security force. These were not IDF uh, soldiers. Some people on holiday in Bulgaria were murdered by Hezbollah, and we now know that one of them had a Canadian passport. Now, there are all sorts of people who claim to be and are Canadian or British or American. We may find out it was a forged passport, but it may not be. People who are valid citizens of various Western countries whose loyalties are to Islam, to Islamism, who pursue terror are using these passports. And whenever we say they're not real Canadians, not, they're not real Americans, we're, of course, we're accused of racism because they are. Well, if you are, you don't try and murder innocent people. Or in the case of the UK, British citizens, you, you don't kill your own people in the subway system and on buses, for goodness sake. No, no, I think you're absolutely right. And uh, of course, uh uh, j just for the sake of, of, of playing devil's advocate, I will accuse you of being a racist because I like throwing down the bait there. Um, no, you're absolutely right. And, and you know what I find funny, though, too, is, is Canadian passports. Generally, Canadians are received more friend. Uh, they're received with more open arms than Americans abroad, certainly in, in certain countries here. Um, and I think also, <clears throat> it, well, now we're getting off on a tangent here. But the thing that you talked about is... Um, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter whether you're American, whether you're Canadian, whether you're English. Uh, as far as people who are committed to Islam, uh, uh, the ideas of, of Islam, they want to kill you. And even if you look at it, uh, this is just something I hear all the time in the States. They don't want to kill anybody. They don't try and kill anyone but Americans. If we just stopped fooling around, they wouldn't bother us. Do you remember not long ago the plan to blow up the, the Montreal subway system? Uh, we, are at, we are at war here with an ideological adversary, one who basically says, if you read their holy book, if you don't believe as we believe, you're not the same as us. You either need to be subjected to demitude or eliminated. And, and there, there's so many issues to get into here, uh, Michael, but yeah. I know you, obviously you're much more of an well, expert on the Islam. Uh, well, I've read the Quran, and I don't like it. Well, I wouldn't say is this. Anyone who says if America changed its foreign policy, Islamic terror would simply evaporate. Do remember that the vast majority of the victims of Islamic terror are law-abiding, decent, moderate Muslim people who simply want to lead their lives and practice their faith. Sure. Sunni slaughtering Shia, Shia slaughtering Sunni, uh, Sunni killing other Sunni simply because they're in the wrong place. So it has nothing to do with any foreign power. When someone becomes a suicide, homicide bomber in a mosque to kill young Muslim children praying, how can you possibly still blame the Jews, America, Britain, and Canada? Hey, we'll see you next week. Always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael.